Today is Sexagesima Sunday. There's just a few announcements. They're rather lengthy. The second collection today is for the cemetery. There's a misprint in the bulletin. Also, I um, want to thank everyone who helped with the bake sale yesterday and today. It was a very nice bake sale. I'm so appreciative of all the people who bake things and help sell them. Next Sunday, we have a, burritos, a burrito breakfast uh, after the masses. This week, the priests are out of town. Uh, Father Delalo's at the meeting in Winona, which I think will be the most important priest meeting we've had maybe in our history of the society in the United States. And I'm, I don't get to be there, so I'm m missing my first meeting. It's like the most important one, but it's because Father Hunter's having treatment done, um, and so he'll be in Spokane getting this colon treatment, and uh, I'll have to stay here to say the public masses and, um, and go to Alaska for him this coming Friday. So you'll notice there's no mass this coming uh, Saturday. There's no mass, and the only mass on Friday is the 715 mass because I have to leave after that to go to Alaska. So keep that in mind. No Mass this coming Saturday. Now the last announcement that is really a lengthy one is about Bishop Williamson. I, um, I wanted to just say a few words to you because after the lifting of the excommunication on January the 25th, that Sunday when we announced it to you, the papers were filled with all these remarks about Bishop Williamson being anti-Semitic and comments he made about the Holocaust. I wanted to just say to you that I've known Bishop Williamson for 29 years. He gave the very first retreat I ever went on. He was rector of the seminary from my second year in the seminary onwards. He was my spiritual director. And I don't think, I'm pretty sure I would not be a priest were not for Bishop Williamson. And I think there are many others who would say the same thing, that they would never become a priest or a seminarian were it not for him. You would, you've attended his sermons, and you would say There's never a, there was never a better preacher. You go to his retreat, you would say, oh my goodness, he's the best retreat master. You go to his lectures in class, and you say, there was never a better teacher or professor. It's a very, very fine man. And I want you to remember all the things that he suffered during the years that he was in charge of the United States District. He was not only rector of the seminary, he was the district superior for a number of years. Then on also, um, no, I take that back. He actually was not district superior at that time, but... He was very short time as district superior for a very short time, actually. And, but all those years as seminary professor, rector of the seminary, and all the things that he did for us, I want you to recall those things so you remember to pray for him and not to, not to hold in your heart any, any resentment for him. Because what happened was, as you know, that he said some things he shouldn't have said he spoke to Swedish television network in Germany and they asked him questions about remarks he had made concerning the Holocaust back in the 90s when he was in Canada and he, he answered these things. Unfortunately, they've been taken out of proportion. They've been taken out of context in many respects. I know Bishop Williamson has always questioned the, the way in which the Jews were put to death. He just doesn't believe that it was that they were all gassed like they're, we've always been told in movies and in books. He just points out it's not logical. It doesn't seem to fit. And then he talks also about the numbers that were killed that he's always called into question. But that doesn't mean that he doesn't believe that Jewish people suffered. He knows they did. And he knows that there are many, many people unjustly murdered not only Jews, but also Christians and Catholics and many others in prison camps and concentration camps. 
And so Bishop Williamson said some things that I think that people have have taken now and made portrayed the society and Bishop Williamson especially as being anti-Semitic. And that's one crime you cannot be guilty of in this world. They will put you in jail for saying things against the Jews. As he says at the end of the interview, he even says to the reporter, now you know, these things are against the law here in Germany. I could be arrested. You could have me arrested as soon as we leave here. So he knew what he was saying was very uh, dangerous. But that's Bishop Williamson. You know he never shies away from controversy. He says what's ever on his mind. He says it. You could almost always tell what he was going to preach about because in the days leading up to his sermon, he'd be discussing a certain topic. Whether it was the American Civil War or it was, you know, something else, you could tell this is going to come into his sermon. He's just, he's a man of great ability and great intelligence. And I think that um, he's going to, he's already been made to suffer a lot for some of his comments. And I think that what we should say about these comments is that he shouldn't have said them. They were imprudent. That he, he said things that put the society in a bad light. And that's why he shouldn't have said them. But he'll notice in the interview, he says, this is what I think. This is his personal thoughts. You should also point that out to people that question you about Bishop Williamson. Just say those are some of his personal thoughts, but he's not an anti-Jewish or anti-Semitic or that he doesn't believe in the Holocaust. He's always questioned certain aspects of the Holocaust from a historical record. And that's what we should say. Granted, they were imprudent. It should not have been said because of the bad light they put all of us in. But at the same time, remember what this man has done for us. And never forget all the sacrifices he's made. I hope you can tell that I love him dearly. He's like a father to me. And I think to many of you as well, for all the sacrifices he's made for us. And just as when your father makes a mistake, you still stand by him and love him and support him, we should do what we can to do the same for Bishop Williamson. And I think that today at Mass we should pray for him in a special way. And as I read St. Paul's epistle today, I think you'll be able to think of Bishop Williamson. It's almost like St. Paul was accused of anti-Semitism too, and he was Jewish. Just like St. Paul, we embrace the saints of the Old Testament who are Jewish, and most of the saints of the early church, of course, were Jewish. And some of the finest, the holiest of converts we've had in the church were of Jewish origin. We are certainly not anti-Semitic. Our religion is founded on Judaism. So, my dear friends, pray for Bishop Williamson. Remember what he's done for the church and try your best to always support him. And especially through prayer. The epistle, today's Mass of Sex.